Okay, so now we're going to take a look at a, another native Windows program called Family Historian, and we're looking at version 6. Now, normally I would complete the install process first and then open up the program, but um, they actually have a very detailed onboarding process that I can't move past. So it's actually a little intrusive if you ask me, but um, hey, so it is. What you should be seeing on the screen right now is what I was presented with because I asked to start a new project in Family Historian and it wants to give me a starting person and potentially his parents. Now I'm just going to do the starting person but as we know by now it's Frank Verling Thompson and we'll see how it handles the um, parsing out the name into uh, given and surname and we know that he's a male and I'm gonna just input that for now and the new project name is Thompson FH6 test and as you can see I'm still typing challenged and this will be my default project alright let me adjust the screen because it also started up in full screen mode which Again, I also thought it was a little intrusive, but so be it. There's certain things you get used to in programs and certain things that annoy you in programs, and uh, that doesn't mean the program's not good. So here we see Frank Verling um, as the, quote, root person. We're on a spouses and children screen, and we can see that there's a parents and siblings and an ancestor screen and a descendants screen. On the right hand side there is a main screen that um, would allow will allow us to input data and I, I don't see a way to do this as a, as a pedigree chart which uh, as you know by now is my preference um, but let's let's see if I click on descendants ancestors ah, let's see if we can do it from this screen just because it's what I'm used to you see here that it capitalized the uh, surname uh, Thompson uh, I imagine that that's probably configurable. Uh, most of these programs it is. So I'm going to go up here onto the right hand side of the screen and I'm going to enter his birth date as we have so many times before. And I'm going to enter it in as 14 June 1891. And as we see here, it has normalized the date as we know to look for now. He died the 9th of October, 1967. And again, oh, invalidate. Doesn't like that format. Um, a little bit similar to, what was it, Heritus that had the same sort of uh, um, interface? October 9th, 1967. Uh, and now we have Frank Verling Thompson, 1891 to 1976. So next I'm going to add his father. And I'm going to create a new record. And his father, as we know, was Charles H. Thompson. Uh, male, yes, of course. And he was born in 1851. And he died 10th of April, 1898. Yes, it accepted that format. And now we will enter in his spouse. So again, I'm going to create a new record. And his spouse was Sarah Jane Raymond. I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is where my grandfather gets his first name was Raymond. Sarah Jane was born in January of 1850 and died on the 10th of December 1912. Okay, so now we have Frank's mother entered into the program. Next we want to link Sarah and Charles in a marriage event, so let's see how we do that in Family Historian. I'm going to try facts, and I'm going to try adding a fact, add a marriage, 
with Charles H. Thompson. And we know that that occurred on 18th of September, 1889. Uh, I do know the place, but we're not going to bother to enter it in here. Okay, so uh, let me go back over to Charles and see if he has the marriage event. And indeed he does. We would expect that. And if I look at descendants, oh, I, he's my root person, parents and siblings. Here you can see Frank as the child, and you can see Charles H. and Sarah Jane as the parents. So that was pretty easy. And we'll add Charles H. Thompson's further father. Again, we'll create a new record. And we know it was Daniel Hart Thompson. And that Daniel was born 1st of June, 1829. And he died on the 30th of July, 1893. Again, we see the normalized dates. I love when that happens. All right, and then we will add his wife, Abigail B. Coates. Yep. And she was born in 1829. And she died 9th of November, 1856. All right, and let's go in and create the marriage fact to join these two together. This was a little bit harder in some of the programs that we looked at. It's relatively easy here. I just need to pick the spouse and add the date. And it was 10th of October, 1846. So she died uh, 10 years and one month later. Um, tab out of that. And there we have it, a descendant, uh, is it a descendant, no, a lineage chart for Frank, Charles, and Daniel with their courting spouses. It's relatively ease in Family Historian. Hey, so we're still in Family Historian 6 here, and after the demo, I was curious and wanted to go in and see, number one, could I configure the... Uh, surnames to not appear in uppercase and number two do I have control over the date format and uh, the answer to both is yes uh, you see here now the dates are displayed in um, camel case or sentence case and if we look over here at the dates um, one of my preferred formats is uh, day day three character month name and then uh, obviously the, the four digit year so, like many of the programs, it's customizable to your tastes.